Okay, we are going to learn HTML. So it's going to be like 10 seconds of history and why HTML exists. And then we're going to move into the basic structure of HTML, which will take another 10 seconds because HTML is super, super easy. And I'm not here to explain everything about it. Um, I'm just going to give you enough so that you can survive. Granted, surviving with HTML isn't that hard. Uh, it's really everything else that's more difficult. So this should be pretty short. So HTML is one of the building blocks of the modern web and also the historic web. Um, the other two parts that are important are CSS and JavaScript, but you can't really use them without HTML. So we are starting with HTML. Now, the thing that you really don't care about is HTML. What does it stand for? And it stands for Hypertext Markup Language, which either sounds really, really cool or really, really boring, depending upon who you are. Um, so let's break it down. First part, we have hypertext, which is obviously an amazing futuristic version of normal text. So once upon a time, there was a guy uh, named Tim Berners-Lee. And he was like, hey, we have a bunch of text, but wouldn't it be cooler if this text were like amazing future text that could link to other documents and be marked up and everything would be amazing? Uh, so let's stop just having text and let's have hypertext instead. And everyone was like, yes, this is amazing. And then the queen was like, you are super cool, Tim Berners-Lee. Let's knight you and turn you into Sir Tim Berners-Lee. So when the uh, London Olympics happened, they were like, look at this cool guy. He invented the internet. And everyone's like, who is this guy? But yeah, he's famous and cool. You should like him. So anyway, uh, he basically invented the web. He invented uh, hypertext. And let's cover the second half of this, markup language. Why is it a markup language? What is a markup language? Well, one, if you list HTML in a list of programming languages, you're going to get run over by a car because it is not a programming language. It's a markup language. Um, the idea behind a markup language is, let's say that you are reading the New York Times. When you visit this web page, there are certain things that are on this page. So normally when you think of marking up something, you think of, let's say your teacher in high school who was like, oh, you spelled this wrong, this, sec this paragraph isn't any good, and she just writes in red ink all over your page and then marks different words or different paragraphs or different sections to kind of say you did something terrible and wrong. It's kind of the same thing a little bit. Um, with HTML being a markup language. The idea is think about a web page as having a bunch of different stuff on it. So this is a headline. This is an image. This is a paragraph. This is a paragraph. Um, this might be a header up here. This might be a footer down here. And the idea with a markup language is that it explains to the browser what all of those different sections are. So instead of, you know, drawing a circle around this title or drawing a circle around this paragraph and saying, this is a paragraph, this is a title up here, you use these things called HTML tags. And every HTML tag means something different. So H1 means like the number one headline. P means paragraph. IMG means image. M means emphasis. That ends up being italic. So basically what HTML is, is people came up with a list of what all of these different terms are and all the different possible parts that you could have on a web page. So when you build that web page, you say, here's the headline, here are a bunch of paragraphs, here is an image. So there aren't that many tags. You'd think that there's a lot, a lot of stuff on this page, right? It all looks different. There are, I don't know, 20, 30 tags, something like that. So let's just jump in and start to use them. So this is a title. If I just type this 
and I save it in a file. And I call that file, I'm going to call it index.html. So .html means this is an HTML file. Save it. I'm going to open it in Chrome. And it says this is a title. That doesn't really look like a title, but it does look like something. It's not a blank page. So the magic thing about HTML is, even though I didn't try to use any HTML tags here, I didn't use anything that looks like an H1 or a P or an IMG or emphasis or any of that, even though I just typed words, the browser's like, eh, okay, this is something I can display. So just know that even if you're screwing up your HTML all of the time, it's not like learning Python. It's not like learning programming. In programming, if you type something a little wrong, your computer explodes. But if you're learning HTML, it's a lot easier because the computer's just like, oh, I kind of get what you're doing. It'll be fine. So we need to use an H1 tag to say this is a title. So the way tags work is they're actually broken down into two parts this and that. So this part is your opening tag. Um, this tag here says, hey, we're about to give you an H1. We're about to give you a number one headline. And then you have your closing tag here. The difference between the two is this forward slash here. So this says it's the beginning of a title. This says it's the end of a title. Save it, refresh, ta-da, it's now a title. So if I told you I wanted a similar headline, this is an H1, it's the number one headline. If I said I wanted a slightly smaller headline, let's say eh, a number two headline, how does that look? And you say, I know how to do it already because I'm not an idiot, save, Refresh, there we go, a smaller one, a smaller one, a smaller one. So H3, H3, H4, H4. So there is an H1, an H2, an H3, an H4, there's an H5, there's an H6, but there's no H7 because that wouldn't make any sense. But apparently having one through six is totally cool and fine. Uh, we talked about other things that show up paragraphs. We have our P tag right here. Looks exactly the same as what we did before. I am typing a paragraph here. Save it. One of the nice things about using a text editor that is smart is if I start to make that angle bracket and hit forward slash, it automatically completes with a P because it says, hey, you opened up a P tag over here. I know that you're trying to make a closing one over here, so I'm just going to make it easy for you. So save, refresh, there we go. Let me throw out some more paragraphs, more paragraphs, more paragraphs. Looking great. So when you're typing a paragraph, there are a few different ways you could say, I am typing a paragraph here. Because you could say, I'm ty typing a paragraph here, or I'm typing, typing a paragraph here. And there are different words that you could say, emphasize over the course of that sentence. So let's try them out. Let's say I want to emphasize paragraph. Bam. So refresh, beautiful, italicizes paragraph there. This just goes to show that you can put tags inside of other tags sometimes. So an emphasis tag, you can emphasize anything. We could emphasize smaller title up here. So, and then smaller title there is italicized. Now you say, Soma, I would have thought that emphasizing something made it bold. If you wanna bold something, it's not an M tag, it's a strong tag and you are blown away by a strong tag because you're like, Soma, they actually typed out an entire word instead of abbreviating like all they do here. Yeah, it's true. Uh, programmers are lazy, we hate typing. 
So generally things are pretty small. Have you heard of HTML5? Uh, basically the difference between HTML5 and earlier versions of HTML is they added a bunch of, know, a few new tags and they added like the video tag and the footer tag and things like that. And they're all very, very long words. So when you see them, just think, ah, oh, that's probably something a little more modern. All right. Um, now what we need to do is we need to get an image because the one other thing I told you about is IMG is image. So let's do that. Let's find an image. We'll look up an image of a cat because who doesn't want an image of a cat? And we're going to save this cat image into the same folder as our index.html. Yes, I said folder. I'm sorry, directory. So we have our index.html file right here. We have our cat.png right here, even though this should clearly be a JPEG, but that's life. Okay. IMG. And you're like, wait, is it going to be IMG cat.png? Does that make sense? Save it, refresh, and it just says the word cat.png. So this is the browser being gracious. This is HTML being easy. Because according to HTML, what we just did is the stupidest thing that HTML has ever seen. It has no idea what we're trying to do, but it's like, look, maybe they just want to type the word cat.png. That'll be fine. What we want to do, though, is we want to have an image and we want to say image, go be cat.png, go get cat.png and fill it in. So here's how it works. The image tag is what's called a self-closing tag. It's a tag that doesn't need one of these closers over here. But what it does need is to know what it's trying to display. So along with the tag here, we also type src equals cat.png. We refresh, and there we go. A beautiful picture of a somewhat skeptical cat. SRC is called an attribute. What an attribute is, is it's just extra information you can add to a tag. All tags have some attributes that they can share. We'll talk about them later. But generally speaking, here, I'll add it to our list over here. Attributes. So IMG needs SRC, right? Beautiful. So. It's just extra information that you give a tag to maybe make it do something else. So for the image tag, if you want it to display an image, you always have to say SRC. It's one of the few things you need to memorize about HTML. Another time that attributes will come up is if you're talking about links. So if we have this over here, where H1 is the headline one, P is paragraph, IMG is image, EM is emphasis, and I say, we are gonna make a link. What do you think the tag for a link is? And you say, it's link. And then you say, no, no, wait, it's gonna be shorter. It's gonna be L. And then I'm like, no, all of that is wrong. Um, what it is is it's an A tag, obviously. Obviously an A tag, an anchor tag. Why? Uh, it's life, A equals anchor. Um, so this is going to be a link right here. And your question is going to be, okay, typing a paragraph is going to be a link. But the important part of a link is that a link actually goes somewhere. So where is this link going to go? And I say, well, maybe we want it to go to Google or something. Um, but how are we going to make it go there? And you say, well, you just talked about attributes. So maybe there's an attribute for an A tag that tells it where the link should go. And I say, you're a genius. This is great. It's like you already watched this. Um, so A needs href. Just a hypertext reference. Why not? A space href equals http www google com. Save, refresh, and now we have a nice link there. Typing a paragraph. If I click it, it, takes me to Google. 
you can add multiple attributes to a single tag here. Oh, also you always put attributes in the opening tag, never the closing tag. The closing tag is always very boring. Uh, let's say when we click this link, we wanted it to open in, in a new window. Target equals uh, underscore new underscore blank. There are like a thousand ways to do it and some of them are official and some of them are not. Um, but now when I refresh and I click this, hey, it opens in a new window. Now, if we have questions about HTML tags, so we want to know about the A tag in HTML. W3 schools is like the oldest, most established place that you can get answers about HTML. But I have found MDN, Mozilla Developer Network, uh, to be better. There's some reason I actually hate W3 schools, if we're going to be honest but I don't remember what the reason is. So you can use either of them. They're both good websites. Uh, you probably shouldn't need to end up on Stack Overflow if you're Googling this stuff, because Stack Overflow is for super technical things and people talking to each other. And HTML is just really, really simple and really easy. Um, so if we scroll around here, this tells us all the different attributes. Uh, character set, coords, download, href, href lang, media, name, rel, rev, shape, target, type. <laughs> Literally the only things you ever use uh, are href as to be where should this link go to. And once in a blue moon, you use target. But generally speaking, um, when you're using HTML tags, you use like four HTML tags and you use like three attributes and that's all you have to memorize. So this was an introduction to HTML. Um, if I tell you there are other HTML tags, if I tell you there is a tag for video or a tag for a sidebar uh, or a tag for a section of a page or a footer, you now know, oh, all I have to do is take the name of the tag and then type some stuff in it. And then maybe it needs an attribute such as blah two equals blah three, right? So you now know all of the fundamentals of HTML. And if you ever need to ask an HTML question again, just ask the internet, because it'll take like 10 seconds for you to find out your answer.